here this morning. It's lovely to be able to see you all here this morning. Welcome. If you're joining us online, a huge warm welcome as well. You know, God longs to meet with us and encourage us this morning. And if you were up early this morning, you'd have been outside and there was just such a lovely, fresh smell, a fresh air. And it's almost that that fills our lungs with life. And you know, Jesus with his disciples, he breathed the Holy Spirit into them to refresh them, to give them life, to help them to know him and for the Spirit to encourage them. And so that's what God wants to do. He wants to meet with us, to encourage and to strengthen us, to give us his hope and his joy. So as we come to the worship, if you're here in the building, I invite you just to stand in expectation. And if you're at home, just lean in and ask the Lord to meet with you. I'm just going to start with a moment of quiet. And I'd love you just to bring something that you'd love to thank God for. Something that's blessed you this day. Maybe something that's encouraged you this week. Let's come with that sense of thankfulness. Lord Jesus, as we thank you, we thank you that your spirit is with us. We thank you that your spirit is living inside us, even in this moment, testifying with children of you. So may we, as we praise, as we worship, may your spirit rise up within us and give us your peace, your hope, your joy, and your healing this day. Encourage us and fill us anew. In your name, amen. We exalt you, Lord. We exalt you. We exalt.
can ever sing. You're worthy of all the praise we can ever bring. Worthy of every breath we can ever breathe. And we live for you. So rest in this space, worthy of every breath we could every, ever breathe. Just breathe in the Lord's goodness. Breathe in his love. Breathe in his spirit. He longs to restore and to renew and to bring peace to the innermost life, to bring hope again to release joy again. And so, Holy Spirit, as we're here in this space, we thank you. We thank you for being with us. And we thank you for showing us more of Jesus. May you open our ears to hear and our minds to understand and our hearts to fall deeper in love with you as you speak to us through the reading of your word and the proclaiming of it this morning. In your name, amen. Do grab a seat if you're in here, and if you're at home, do tune in as Elaine comes to read. You're welcome to put on your phone in this moment if you've got a Bible app, or if you've got your Bible with you. Why don't you just open it up to follow along, because it's this most amazing prayer, and it's great to be able to think and reflect upon it. Thank you, Elaine. Today's reading from Daniel, chapter 9, starting at verse 4. I prayed to the Lord my God and confessed, Lord, the great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keeps his commandments, we have sinned and done wrong. We have been wicked and rebelled. We have turned away from your commands and laws. We have not listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, our princes and our ancestors, and to all the people of the land. Lord, you are righteous, but this day we are covered with shame. The people of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and all Israel, both near and far, in all the countries where you have scattered us because of our unfaithfulness to you. We and our kings, our princes, and our ancestors are covered with shame. Lord, because we have sinned against you, the Lord our God is merciful and forgiving, even though we have rebelled against him. We have not obeyed the Lord our God or kept the laws he gave us through his servants and prophets. All Israel has transgressed your law and turned away, refusing to obey you. Therefore, the curses and sworn judgments written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, have been poured out on us because we have sinned against you. You have fulfilled the words spoken against us and against our rulers by bringing on us great disaster. Under the whole heaven, nothing has ever been done like what has been done to Jerusalem. Just as it is written in the law of Moses, all this disaster has come on us, and yet we have not sought the favor of the Lord our God by turning away from our sins and giving attention to your truth. The Lord did not hesitate to bring disaster on us, for the Lord our God is righteous in everything he does, yet we have not obeyed him. Now, Lord our God, you brought your people out of Egypt with a mighty hand, and who made for yourself a name that endures to this day. We have sinned. We have done wrong. Lord, in keeping with your righteous acts, 
Turn away your anger and your wrath from Jerusalem, your city, your holy hill. Our sins and the iniquities of our ancestors have made Jerusalem and your people an object of scorn to all those around us. Now, our God, hear the prayers and petitions of your servant. For your sake, Lord, look with favor on your desolate sanctuary. Give ear, our God, and hear. Open your eyes and see the desolation of the city that bears your name. We do not make requests of you because we are righteous, but because of your great mercy. Lord, listen. Lord, forgive. Lord, hear and act. For your sake, my God, do not delay, because your city and your people bear your name. Well, good morning. Good morning, and welcome again to those of you here and those of you online. I've just been standing across there counting the number of times that uh, Jerusalem was referred to in that passage, because this morning as I um, was preparing to give this talk in the first service, I was really panicking, because I kept hearing Jerusalem, 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 and uh, you won't hear Jerusalem mentioned in this, in, in this talk. So I really panicked for a moment there, but then I thought, no, Jerusalem is not, no longer where God resides. The temple does not contain Jesus Christ. The temple was broken, wasn't it? And Jesus came out by the Holy Spirit. He lives. We are the temple. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So this morning, open yourself up to allow God in allow him to resonate in the chapel of your hearts and souls this morning. Let's pray. Yes, Lord, we just want that to happen this morning. We want you to teach us your spirit, your truth, your name. Amen. So, well, uh, last week, Marcus, uh, well, last week we were in the 11th century BC. That's where we were. We're looking at the prayers of Hannah. And Marcus took us through those prayers and provided us a summary of Hannah's prayers, which was uh, exalting God and looking to the king. Exalting God and looking to the king. Well, today we're in the, the 6th century BC, uh, so 500 years or so have passed, which included God allowing Israel to fulfill its desire to, to have a kingdom of its own. Now, despite uh, the high points of King David and King Solomon, that turned out to be no different to all of the other human kingdoms of the day. Israel broke its covenant with God, going its own way, as we heard in that reading. And the way of kingdoms in those days, well, was just to fight each other, conquer each other. And Israel was again taken captive, by other nations. It was Egypt all over again. So there's a spiritual lesson to learn from those 500 years. Where should God's people draw their strength? What is the basis for our, their, our confidence? Is it taken from human society, from earthly kingdoms, such as Israel were chasing after? or from God's own revelation to us, his own covenant with us. Well, as I said, today we're in the 6th century BC. We're in Babylon, where Daniel was a Jewish slave servant in the court of the Babylonian king Darius. Uh, the southern kingdom of Judah had been a captive to Babylon for close to 70 years. And for a number of those years, Daniel had been an extraordinarily successful uh, administrator in the king's court. Even so, Daniel had remained faithful to the God of Israel. He did not break covenant. You might remember the story of, a, as a younger man, he was thrown into the lion's den because he, because he remained faithful, praying to the God of heaven and refusing to pray to King Darius. And when Daniel survived 
the, the lion's den, King Darius issued a decree that Daniel's God must be recognized and exalted in Babylon. You can see, can't you, how God is using and blessing Daniel's faithfulness, just as he used and blessed Hannah's faithful, faithfulness so, so long ago. Scripture is very clear. God uses and blesses the faithfulness of his people. And that's where prayer comes in. Today, we're looking at Daniel's prayer. Last week, it was Hannah's prayer. You know, major geopolitical events can be triggered by the prayers and actions of faithful people. Think of the reformation of the church and Martin Luther King. Think of the anti-slavery movement, William Wilberforce. Think of the, the, the evacuation of Dunkirk and the, and the National Day of Prayer called for that, for that, called by King George VI. Now that may thrill you or greatly worry you. Either way, it's true. Our prayer, our prayer life, seems to be important to God. So what was it about Daniel's prayer that deserves our attention today? I think we can take two things away from the reading. The first is we, we see the, the ACTS framework, A-C-T-S, ACTS framework of prayer, well before it was invented and used in our church more widely uh, over the centuries, I suppose. A, adoration. C, confession. T, thanksgiving. S, supplication. Uh, but we see something else. Secondly, we see audacity, sheer audacity. Daniel expects the will of God to be implemented. So first, let's just take a look at the Acts framework. We see it in verses 15 and 16. Now, you may already know about this model. It's widely used in the church. It seems to come naturally to us. Uh, we see it in many prayers in Scripture. Today is, is one point uh, to focus on. Um, and we see, all, obviously, in the Lord's Prayer, of course, as well, Jesus used this framework. It seems to encapsulate the values and the design intent of the kingdom of God. We don't know its origins in terms of the way that we use it today. Maybe, just maybe, this prayer model is a spiritual gift to God's people, you think. So what is it about Daniel's prayer? How, how do we see this model here? Well, in verse 15, we can see adoration and confession. Now, Lord our God, who brought your people out of Egypt with a mighty hand and who made for yourself a name that endures to this day, we have sinned and have done wrong. God, you are our God. Yours is the power. Your mighty hand, it says in that verse. Yours is the glory. Your name is what endures to today. This is adoration, acknowledging God's glory and power. And after adoration comes confession. Daniel confesses that Israel has sinned and done Wrong. In our earlier verses, Daniel describes the nature of his sin, unfaithfulness, a rebellion, a refusal to obey the laws given to Moses. So what's the big deal with confession? Why is the acknowledgement of our sins necessary? Well, when we repent, we, we not only uh, acknowledge that we have broken covenant, with God, but we show God that we are turning to Him. We are looking to the King, like Hannah. Repentance and confession uh, are as important in the Old Testament as they are in the New. Now, in the ACTS, the Acts Prayer Framework, after adoration and confession comes thankfulness and supplication which we see in verse 16. Lord, in keeping with all your righteous acts, it says, turn away your anger and your wrath from Jerusalem, your city. So in the first part of that verse, Daniel is saying, 
thank goodness you are righteous. Because we certainly aren't. But Daniel, God alone is good. Everything God does should meet our approval, should be welcomed and accepted with thankfulness. And this thankfulness is then the basis of Daniel's request that God would turn away from his anger. And that's the S in the Acts framework, supplication. Now, supplication is an earnest request. If you look it up in the dictionary, or if you Google it, um, it's a deeply felt need. And certainly, we sense Daniel's deep desire in this prayer. Daniel's audacity comes out of this desire. If we are going to pray like Daniel, we need, we need audacity, which we see in verses 17 to 19. Now, quite literally, Daniel is, uh, uh, tells God to, to come to his senses. Come on, God, open your eyes. Open your ears. I don't know what kind of ears and eyes God has, but have you ever felt that way? Nothing seems to be changing. God is silent. The truth is, not all prayers are answered the way that we want. People die. They stay sick. Relationships end. Our children suffer. It's hard. Well, where can you find hope in this situation? What can... What can you trust when you are not getting the answers you want? Well, Romans, Paul tells the Romans that, we, that, that in all things, in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. Do you believe it? Daniel seemed to believe it. He knew God's character was good. And that's where he finds his hope. He says to God in verse 19, Lord, Lord, listen. Lord, forgive. Lord, hear and act for your sake. Do not delay because your city and your people bear your name. Come on, God, get it done. The kingdom, of, the, kingdom the power the glory, the goodness, the righteousness are yours now and forever. So let's have it. Get it done. And that's our, our jumping off point this morning for us. It's our, it's our prayer life that we... Well, it's in our prayer life. It's in our prayer life that we give control to God for our lives. The extent to which God can use us is directly proportional to the extent to which we offer ourselves in prayer. And don't worry, this is as challenging to me as it may be to some of you. But this is what comes out of Daniel's prayer. It's a real challenge. Individual prayer, collective prayer, praying in worship. These are the spiritual charging stations of our lives. Our spiritual energy and conviction comes from them. It's where our spiritual audacity comes from. And of course, the opposite is true. The extent to which we chase after worldly life goals is directly proportional to the time we spend on them. Jesus said, didn't he, where your treasure is, there also is your heart. Your heart is not with God if you're not praying. You're not exalting God. You're not looking to the king. God is not the basis of your confidence if you're not praying. Well, if that's you, perhaps you need to be reminded of God's greatness and righteousness this morning. Oh, come, let us adore him. Not just at Christmas time. 
Be reminded of your sin this morning as you confess that you are not as righteous as God. The, the Acts prayer framework leads us from that adoration and confession into thankfulness for His goodness, reminding us that at least there's someone who is good, And we plead to that goodness for all our needs. Can that be you in your need today? In your frustration today? There was 500 years between Hannah and Daniel. And there were plenty of highs and lows for his people during that time. But the failure of Israel to maintain its adoration and confession and thankfulness led it to break covenant with God. You know, we live in a different covenant to Hannah and Daniel now, don't we? I mentioned the thing about, the, about Jerusalem and the temple. But it's the same God that we exalt along with Hannah and Daniel. It's the same covenant of love that Daniel mentions in this beginning of this reading. It's the same king we look to as Hannah looked to, as Daniel looked to. King Jesus, who is God from heaven. God from heaven, come to live amongst us, died for our sins, rose again in victory. That victory was always God's plan. Always God's plan from before creation. The plan that he would look away from his anger, as Daniel asked for Jerusalem. Look away from your anger across us, Lord. Well, on the cross, he did just that, didn't he? Jesus, on the cross, distracted God's anger from us. Never to be poured on us again for those who trust in the cross and follow Jesus. Can you, as I close, after making the decision to believe in Jesus, have the audacity to say, come on, God, come to your senses. Let's have it. Your righteousness in my situation, your kingdom come, your will be done. And we can never know, can we, the extent to which our prayers may lead to a blessing not only for us and others, but nations. Let's pray. Just take a moment to be with the Father. Remember that you are the temple of God. And so, Father, we pray for a restoration service to our hearts and minds. With Daniel, we pray, restore in us a new heart. We thank you for the, the constancy of your love, Old Testament, New Testament. Before creation, in eternity, your love remains the same. So, Father, we thank you for that. And we pray, Lord, that you would help us to look away from self, look away from the world for our confidence and find our confidence in you, your goodness. Lord, we place our hope in you. Help us, Father, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to invite you in our next song, which is a song of adoration, to have the audacity to come before the Lord.
And it might be that as we sing, there's something you just want to say in adoration to God. It might be that second part of confession. You just know there's something you need to say sorry for and put right. Just quietly do it. It might be a word of thanks. And then, in a few moments, Katie will come and lead us in prayer. But it will be an opportunity for us to bring our own requests to the Lord. But why don't we use this song to allow us to have the audacity to continue to lean into God, to continue to pray, and to know his life within us. So I invite you to stand or join in online wherever we are. And let's lean into the Lord and allow his spirit to breathe into us. Let's start and receive our adoration.
And so I invite you to sit or kneel as we come to our prayers now. Daniel with faithful in prayer. And God calls us to be faithful in prayer too. Thank you, Katie. Thank you. Good morning. Um, I'm going to be basing our prayers around Isaiah, some parts of Isaiah 40, but I just want us to take a moment now, just um, after um, our praise of adoration, just to put things to one side, to spend that time with God in your heart, to just close your eyes and think of where you are right now and put anything aside that is getting in the way, whether it's a difficult morning, whether it's things on your mind, whether it's just stuff that's just getting you down we just pray that you yeah can you just put that to one side can you repent of that can you say sorry for those things that have got in the way of your prayer life um, of your time with God of your ability to even just focus on um, church on others um, so just take that time now And Lord, will you purify our hearts? We know that you forgive us when we turn to you. So I'm going to read some of these verses from Isaiah 40. Do you not know, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. Heavenly Father, we pray for your creation right now and situations in the world where natural events have caused devastation. We pray for places recovering from the impact of wildfires, hurricanes, and, dr and drought. Lord, will you bring your provision to those areas and comfort those who have lost loved ones and places dear to them. We pray for your world and the decisions that leaders and we as people make that affect it. Help us not to be apathetic or to consider short-term gains over long-term losses. And we're sorry for times when we have done that. We pray for our waterways, our oceans and the habitats in the UK. Help each of us to be good stewards of our environment. Do you not know, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Lord, there are many situations in the world that we don't understand right now. We don't understand why and how the wills and decisions of individuals affect whole nations and lead to people experiencing war or needing to leave their homes for places of safety. We don't understand why people get sick or accidents happen. We know you are a good God and someone who shares in our sunrise. Help us to trust in you. Mighty God, we pray that your will be done and your kingdom come in these situations and others that are on our hearts and minds. And take some time. Let, I think you might have things that come to mind that make you sad right now. Take that time to pray to God and say, I don't understand, but Lord, I trust in you and I trust that you are a good God. Do you not know, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fail. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Lord, we bring to you those people in our community, in our families and congregation who are feeling tired and weary. We pray that you give them strength and energy to walk the paths you have for them. We pray especially for teachers, children and students starting back to school. Fill them with strength, energy and joy for teaching and learning. Take away any anxieties or worries about the next few days and be a shield and protector. Go before them in their new starts to the term. And we pray also for the staff team at church as they anticipate the start of a new term and the busy run-up to the Christmas period. 
Give them wisdom, strength, and energy as a team. We pray for those connections that have been built over the summer, that they continue to grow, and that more people will come to know you through encounters with this church and the churches around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And so let us gather all our thoughts and prayers together as we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, we're going to come now to uh, just a couple of notices, but I'd like to invite Mary Salter up uh, first, if that's all right. Um, can we just give Mary a round of applause? And that's a rehearsal for the applause we're going to give her in a moment. So Mary's been with us since 1995, serving as a reader in some amazing ways. And her teaching and her prayers support so much of the life of this parish. And uh, so Mary's still going to be amongst us. um, But for the next few months till January, Mary's actually going to be taking a sabbatical from upfront ministry here. So it's a time of refreshment and a time of renewal and uh, a time uh, just to recover from all that she's given out here. She'll still be around, so please do say hi to her as well. Um, But it's just this opportunity. So Mary, in a moment, we're going to give you a big round of applause for thanks for all you've done. But we just wanted to pray for you now in this space as you take this time with the Lord. So I just invite you, wherever you are, why don't you just like set a hand forward or something just so that we're gathered around you. And so Mary, we just want to thank you. And Lord, as we honor Mary in this space, we thank you for her faithfulness in you. We thank you for how she's led the parish as a warden, how she's faithfully preached your word, how she's faithfully prayed and cared. We thank you for the people she's led to you, the people she's encouraged, and the people that she's pastored and just gently helped forward. Thank you for the hope that she brings. Thank you for the wisdom that she always brings. And thank you for the joy that comes from her too. And so, Lord Jesus, in this time of sabbatical, may you grant her your rest, deep, deep soul rest. May you release new streams of living water that renew heart, mind, body, and soul. May you draw her deeper and closer into you. And may she know your blessing and the joy and blessing of this church with her too in this time. We ask these things in your name. Amen. So let's give Mary a huge round of applause for everything she's done. Just got a couple more notices for us this morning. That on Wednesday we have our prayer and worship night at 7:45, an opportunity for us to come together and to start this term in prayer and worship and listening to the Lord. On the 23rd of September, we have our day at the seaside at the beach. So please do come and join in with others. And then we've got a daytime alpha course starting on Tuesday, the 26th of September. So again, if you'd like to find out more about the faith, you're welcome. Or if you've got a friend that you'd love to bring, please do. And we're going to also then be having another evening course starting in January as well. So there is plenty of opportunities for us to find out more and to invite others to come to know Jesus. And also, we've got a date ahead in your diary in November that we'd love you to reserve. And it's the uh, Saturday, the, I'm going to remember it now, it's 26th in one second, 25th of November, um, where we actually are having a day here in the church. Um, we're going to spend some time thinking about how we share our faith, how we communicate our faith, and also what happens when some of the harder questions come up.
So we'd love you now to be putting that date in the diary, Saturday 25th of November, and we'll release more details in a few weeks' time. But let's now continue in our worship and continue declaring God's goodness as we stand to sing. Thank you so much for joining with us here this morning. And if you'd like to find out more about our ministries, please do go to our website, www.christchurchware.co.uk or do check out our social media. And so let's spend a few moments just continuing to receive the Lord's blessing as we open our hands as a sign of openness. And so may you know God's peace May you know his strength, may you know his love, his hope, 
his joy as you journey through into this week. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you, remain with you and all whom you love. And may it flow from you wherever you are this week. Amen. Thank you.